Hello, let's talk about the chemical equations. Uh, first, you have to know what is the concept of uh, chemical equation. Uh, basically, chemical equation is a presentation of uh, a chemical reaction with the help of symbols in the formula of uh, substances involved in the reaction. So, that equation that involves uh, the reaction uh, with the help of the symbols and the formula of substances is what we call this chemical equation. Now it is the chemical shorthand for representing uh, the reacting substances, combining which are known as the reactants and the substance formed as a result of the reaction, which are known as the products. A molecular equation is the one which shows the react reactants combining and the products formed in their elemental or molecular forms in a chemical reaction. An example of molecular equation is the reaction between sodium and water produces sodium hydroxide solution and the hydrogen gas. As you can see there, sodium reacts with water to produce sodium hydroxide and the hydrogen gas. Moving on. Let's see the word equations for given chemical reactions. Uh, what do you mean when you talk about word equations? Here we mean that it is a short form of expressing a chemical reaction by words. Now, chemical reaction can be summarized by word equations that show all the reactants in the products. Now, this type of equation links together the names of the reactants in the products. For example, the burning of magnesium in air producing magnesium oxide it can be represented by the following word equation such as in magnesium plus oxygen is equal to magnesium oxide requirements for representing a chemical reaction so any method for representing a chemical reaction whether uh, using a molecular formula or word equations uh, must meet the basic certain requirements these are the first one that the chemical nature of the reactants as well as those of the products must be clear or must be written or the physical phase of the reactants as well as that of the products must be clearly written or as the reactants can be solid, gaseous, liquid or aqueous forms is the same to the products. The other requirement is that the more ratios in which the products are combined and the products are formed, it must be divisible. This means that the atoms of the reactants in the products must be balanced. The last requirement for the representing chemical reaction is that the direction of the reaction must be established. Uh, this means that it should be clearly shown which substances are the reactants and which ones are the products. This is normally done by the separating the reactants from the products by an arrow or arrows compared to which kind of the reaction, whether it could be reversible or non-reversible. Now the arrow normally points from the reactants to the products. Let's see the types of chemical reactions. Here we're going to see a few of the types of chemical reactions, starting with the first one that is the combination or synthesis reaction. Uh, is simply expressed by A plus B results to C. So synthesis reaction occurs when two or more simple substances or elements or compounds are combined to form one new or more complex substance. The general form of synthesis reaction is as the element or compound because element or compound results to a certain compound. Now the relation between the example iron and the sulfur to form iron two sulfur D is the best example for this kind of reaction as the iron combines it directly with the sulfur to form iron two sulfide. As you can see in the equation, iron in solid phase plus this sulfur in solid phase is into iron two sulfide, which is also in the solid phase. The other type of chemical reaction is the decomposition reaction, as the, shown as the A is just to B plus C. Basically, when you talk about decomposition reaction, this occurs when one compound breaks down into simple substances. Uh, all decomposition reactions have one thing in common, which is that there is only 
one reactance and it breaks. There is only one reactant in which it breaks down into two or more simple products. Now the decomposition can be brought about by heat, light, electricity, and even enzymes or catalysts. So all these can contribute or are the things that speed up or are the things that can make up with the decomposition of a compound. Now decomposition by heat, this is caused by heat as it is also some is also termed as the thermal decomposition example this is thermal decomposition is the decomposition of calcium carbonate known as limestone which breaks down into calcium oxide that is quick lime and the carbon dioxide base when you take as you can see in the word equation there calcium carbonate when you hit it is a central calcium oxide plus a carbon dioxide the other type of chemical reaction is the displacement reaction. Uh, the displacement reaction occurs when another element in a compound is replaced by an element. A metal only substitutes for a metal and a non-metal only substitutes for a non-metal. So that should be clearly known when a displacement reaction takes place. Now only if a more reactive element in the compound with which it reacts can replace the other element. Uh, displacement reaction can either be a single or double displacement reaction. This means that uh, a single displacement can happen in the equation or a double displacement of the elements can happen in the reaction. Example of the displacement reaction, you see that this is chlorine plus sodium bromine is just to sodium chloride plus bromine. As you can see in the reaction, uh, the bromine is being replaced or displaced by the sodium. So in the equation, as you can see, it will result as the chlorine plus sodium bromine, that is sodium is going to react with the chlorine. So the chlorine is what it displaces the bromine. So it's a central sodium chloride plus bromine. The other reaction is that is the precipitation reaction. Uh, this reaction occurs when uh, two soluble reactants react to produce one of the insoluble product. For example, maybe two different soluble sources which are in aqueous solutions combine it to form two products. Now, one of these products is insoluble in solution and is precipitated out, and therefore that's why it's known as a precipitate. The last type of chemical reaction is the redox reaction that is abbreviated from reduction oxidation reaction. Uh, in this reduction oxidation reaction, we, we see there are two processes that are oxidation and the reduction. Starting with the oxidation, that is the process which involves the addition of oxygen or any electronegative element or the removal of hydrogen or any electropositive element. So simply oxidation can either be of those that are uh, addition of oxygen or uh, any electronegative element or the removal of hydrogen or any electropositive element. Now oxidation is also defined as the process in which atom or ion loses one or more electrons in terms of electrons. For example, for oxidation that the carbon plus the carbon carbon plus oxygen is just into carbon dioxide. So there's oxidation of carbon whereby oxygen is added in, in carbon to result to carbon dioxide. Induction, this is a process which involves the addition of hydrogen or any electropositive element or the removal of oxygen or any electronegative element. So either of this could be a definition to reduction that uh, the addition of hydrogen or Electro positive element or the removal of oxygen or any electronegative element. Now, reduction is also defined as the process in which atom or ion gains or gains one or more electrons. So that is in terms of electrons. Now, example of reduction, as you can see, nitrogen by hydrogen, you get NH3. So that's example for the reduction of nitrogen where hydrogen is added into the nitrogen. I hope it's clear, guys. Thank you for listening.